Good morning. Today's thought comes from Mark chapter 12. Now, up to this point, Jesus has been questioned by the Pharisees and the Herodians regarding temple taxes. He's been questioned by the Sadducees regarding the resurrection. He's answered them both and they weren't happy with the answer. Surprise, surprise. But now a teacher of the law comes to him out of possibly one of these groups. Here comes a man who's been listening and observing and he asks a question. So our reading is Mark chapter 12, starting at verse 28. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength. And to love your neighbours as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. I often feel like I want to get to that stage where nobody will ask me any more questions. But that kind of negates the point of being a pastor. People ask the questions. I don't always have the answer and I have to go away and, and search the answer. But isn't it interesting that out of this passage comes the greatest commandment? It's actually something then we should surely pay a lot of attention to. So the greatest commandment. Here we have three statements, two commands, one commandment. So the three statements are these. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. That's the first statement. The second, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second statement. Then the second is love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. There's your third statement, second commandment or second command. But then he goes on to say there is no commandment greater than these. He combines these three statements into one commandment. To love God. To honour God as one and to love your neighbour. It's interesting, those three areas of God's sovereignty and authority. That's where we start. Then we see the extent of which we are to love God. And then the outpouring of his love and that meditation onto others. I find one of the most humbling phrases in this passage is actually when Jesus says to the teacher, uh, you are not far from the kingdom of God. I think the goal of every Christian believer is to get to a place where we will hear our saviour say, you're not far off. You've got it. You're close. You're nearly there. Quite often we don't feel that way. We feel we're far off. Currently in isolation, we think, how am I supposed to develop my relationship with God? What do I do about my family? What about my mental health? What if I am going stir crazy in my very living room? What do I do? I've watched a couple of very funny parodies of songs that families and individuals have done uh, to express their frustration being stuck in their living room. The question is, though, are we just meant to distract ourselves during this time? Or are we to use this time to exercise this greatest commandment? How can we exercise this greatest commandment? The first thing we need to do is die to self. We need to grieve. In truth, we have lost the life we lived a few weeks ago. We are all in grief mode. Maybe some of us are in denial mode where we're distracting ourselves as much as possible, but our lives have changed and we can actually either embrace this change or we can fight it. It's interesting when Jesus says, 
and he starts off by saying this first statement. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the God is one. Straight out of Deuteronomy, where Moses is announcing to his people that God is one. There is only one God, and here he is, the one who brought you out of Egypt, the one who has established his covenant promises with you. Give him the glory and the worship. This statement is so important as we die to self, because it says, God, you have authority and sovereignty over my life. And I want to give you glory for that. I want to ask for your sovereignty and authority to be over my current circumstances, whether I'm healthy or unhealthy, whether I'm quite peaceful about being in isolation or I'm going stir crazy. God, I need you to be the Lord of my life. We grieve the loss of a life, but we're living to a new focus. Then he goes on to say, love the Lord your God with all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. I, I love this because it, it covers every aspect of our, of our living, of our thinking. Love God in every prayer. That's the soul. The soul connects with God through prayer through that spiritual fruit that he's developing in you and me. Develop your love through every thought. God, my thoughts are dark. I'm, I'm, I'm in the abyss of frustration being at home alone or suffering with a cough or worried I'm going to get one. I'm worried about my family so far away. I don't know what to do. Lord, I love you and I know you love me. And I know that you love my family and I know that you love me in this horrible situation. And God, I'm going to fill my mind with you. I'm going to look in the Psalms. I'm going to look in what your word is saying. I was watching social media and somebody put up, if you want to read God's word, read quietly. If you want to hear God's word, read it out loud. Read the word of God out loud. Let your prayer and your thoughts be filled with God's promises and truths. And then in every deed. With all your strength, love God. And that's a fight. That's a battle. And we are in a battle. It's not going to be simply, let's put our feet up and just worship God. Worshiping God is work. Bible study is work. It's hard work because we're fighting the oppression of isolation, the oppression of loss. And loss is an oppression. And we can be freed from it through working through it with God on our side. And then out of our worship, because that is what loving God in all these ways does, we're to love our neighbour. Now, how do you love your neighbour when you've got walls and space between them and the police saying no gatherings? Well, first of all, the phone. Listen to people. Talk to people. Offer to pray with people. And this comes out of your meditations on God. Notice love your neighbour isn't the golden rule. The golden rule is actually the whole God is one, love God, love your neighbour. They flow. Listen, talk, offer prayer out of your love for God, out of God's love for you. Weep, mourn, laugh with your neighbour. And invite people to return to the throne of grace. Because that throne of grace where Christ himself suffered in isolation, in mourning, in grieving, in weeping, in crying out, may this cup be taken from me. Christ is going to follow that path of suffering for us. And he says, take up your cross and follow me because he knows we too will suffer in this life. But look at the glory that awaits, the glory that is to come. God is cultivating in you during this time a fruitful harvest. That's something we can pray for each other and long for each other. Take time to read these verses. Take time to read through chapter 12. Tomorrow we, we move on to the other chapters because we're coming very fast to Maundy Thursday. And also, please take time today to pray for our prime minister and our leaders. Whatever your feeling is about politics and government leaders, whatever your partisan lines are, God calls us to pray for those in authority and those in leadership. So let us pray for Boris Johnson and pray for our government that he will be well and he will recover and that no matter what, God's sovereignty will rule and that God's grace will be known even through this time of suffering. 
Thank you for your time this morning, and I look forward to sharing with you tomorrow's thought, continuing in Mark's Gospel. Thank you.